It's time to move on to the next video from the series, which is going to be on the topic of how you can navigate through the vSphere clients. Hello friends, this is Nick from NLB Solutions and today we are going to look into the navigation between the two vSphere clients that were provided by VMware. So for the purpose of this video, I will need my uh, DC01, my domain controller for authentication. I will need my storage server to provide storage to my ESXi hosts. And from this server, I'm going to browse and show you the uh, different vSphere clients. And I've powered on my two ESXi hosts along with my vCenter server virtual machine. So, um, as you can uh, see from the um, from the beginning of the video, um, there are two now two clients, vSphere clients that you can use, and I think from the um, 6.0 uh, virtual center, the actual application that we use to love uh, the Windows application for the vCenter, uh, the vSphere application was decommissioned, and from 6.5. Uh, you are not even able to connect with uh, using the old application to the servers. You get an error. Maybe there is a workaround, but for from 6.5, you are not going to be able to um, connect using your Windows application to, to the vCenter server. So instead, uh, VMware decided to go more web-based. Uh, and this is understandable because everything is pretty much moving to the web nowadays. So let's dig in and see what's the difference between the two clients. So straight away, when I open the web address for my um, vCenter server, I'm presented with a getting started web page and there is a lot of information that you can browse and find documentation uh, for uh, different topics that you are looking for. And right on the left side, you will see that you have uh, the ability to use two different ways to access the uh, vCenter server in general. So the first one is the vCenter web client, which was, I think it was introduced back in 5.5, maybe earlier. Um, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, this is the normal uh, web client uh, that uh, needs an Adobe Flash player to work or different plugins that are basically provided by um, VMware as well when you try to open the um, web address which is the name of the vCenter server with uh, slash vSphere dash client it will connect to it and let's say a few words about this client it will have the full functionality of the vCenter server and you can do all of the things that are available uh, on your vCenter from here the other client, on the other hand, does not have this ability, but we'll speak on later. So right on the bottom, you will see that uh, VMware uh, gave you the ability to download the extensions, the enhanced authentication plugin and everything else that you need uh, first to download and install on your computer, as long with uh, the Adobe Flash Player, which is a uh, prerequisite for this, uh, this client to work. And so... Uh, what and why VMware decided to move along uh, and try to develop their own um, web application is because the web client and the Flash player in general provides many bugs and usually tends to crash, it's slow and it's not responsive as VMware wanted to be. So what they've decided to do is they decided to build this uh, HTML5 uh, client that we are going to look on further. But nevertheless, let's first log in to um, this uh, vSphere client. And uh, surprise, surprise, I have <laughs> went ahead and I've integrated my Active Directory to my uh, vCenter server. So now instead of using the administrator at vSphere.local, I'm going to use my noblab.com and then I'm going to use the account Nick to log in to my vCenter server. And let's see if this would work. Hopefully it will, please work, <laughs> because I don't want to <laughs> show any 
failed attempts from the first run but yeah it should w when i see this window it should uh, work in general so like i said uh, the client is a bit slow sluggish and uh, it can although it has the full functionality it can um, cause a lot of pain for users for administrator when they try to do a certain task so after I've managed to successfully log into the vCenter server using the vSphere client, I will, um, if, you, if you have a license, you can uh, straight away click and add the license in here. But as this is evaluation, I'm just going to close this so it doesn't take any space. But straight away, you will see uh, this is the um, initial web page that uh, you will be presented with. And from here, what you can do, there are different things that um, that you can go to, um, and depending on where you click, you will have different options. And I might add that the this um, vSphere client is a bit different, and a lot of options were changed from the one uh, that was presented at uh, for the vCenter uh, version six. So uh, there are a lot of things that, uh, and if you know the version six by heart, it will be a bit confusing at first. But uh, most of the things that are that are generic are still here, and you can use them. So. Uh, if you go on the top, you have the option to go to home and from here you have a basically an overview of what you can do with the vCenter server and what are the options. So on the left side you can see this is the navigator pane and from here you can go back or go forward. And depending on, like I said, the option that I click, it's going to um, lead me to this uh, option that I want to configure. or let me go back and um, yeah this is a uh, let's say a shortcut menu that you can use to browse through everything and I'm not going to go into deep details on what you can do basically this is a thing that you need to go ahead and click for yourself and find out where exactly are the things that you need but the basic the basic uh, steps that you can do and you can check are the inventories and the inventories like uh, when I clicked on the first hosts and clusters it will go into the uh, view that will show me what are my data centers what are my ESXi hosts if I have any clusters configured in here they will show as well but for now I don't have any and on the top ribbon you will see a lot of options that are um, available when you go on to because we are currently um, highlighted uh, there is currently highlighted the vCenter server in general so this is the sum summary of the vCenter this is the overview of what are the resources that uh, my vCenter server is currently working with and what are the the maximum capacities that uh, I can have from from this environment under the monitor page, you have um, information of uh, any alarms, any errors. You can see the alarms on the bottom right side as well. So uh, these are new. Uh, you can acknowledge any alarms and see what has been acknowledged. Maybe there is an, uh, a junior administrator that is acknowledging alarms, but uh, there is an issue, underlying issue that needs to be resolved. So uh, in here you have different uh, events, system logs and sessions to see who uh, managed to log in to um, the vCenter server and you can see right here what is going on and uh, yeah I'm not going to go through everything because the video will become very lengthy but this is the basic overview for the um, hosts and clusters view the next tab is the VMs and templates. In here you will have information about the virtual machines and any templates, virtual machine templates that you've configured. And later on from the series we'll create some uh, templates so you will see that they will appear in here as well. The next tab is the data stores. And if I open my data center, you will see that uh, at the moment I have only two data stores, but it's possible that you have more than two. It's possible that you have, uh, maybe it's not iSCSI, maybe it's a local storage in here listed. So the data stores and uh, storage in general is really helpful if you want to go and see what's the overview of the uh, current environment and look from the point of a data store so you can see what's uh, the actual capacity of the data stores if you want to browse the data stores you can browse them from here you can set different permissions and so on and so on so again 
I recommend for you to go ahead and uh, go check the options on the top. You will see different options that are available for data stores that we'll use uh, later on. And the last tab that I want to show you from here is the uh, networking tab, which um, will um, provide an overview information of what are the available networks uh, that I have, the available switches. So uh, there is a different between, uh, difference between a standard switch and a distributed switch. So we'll look on more into uh, the further videos. But in general, this is uh, the overview of the vSphere client. Most of you, if you are working with vCenter, will be familiar, but nevertheless, go ahead and uh, browse through the options because they are a bit changed, let's say. Uh, here, you will see the work in progress that you want uh, to do or uh, the recent tasks that are going on. So, for example, if I try to power on a virtual machine, it will appear in the recent tasks tab. So, let me try that. Of course, there is an option to right click and uh, on the on the different uh, um, depending on what you want to select and you can you have different options. For example, if I click on an ESX, I'll have the option to create a virtual machine. But when I click on a virtual machine and uh, it's taking some time, of course, but uh, I have different options for the virtual machine as well. So if I power on this virtual machine or initial initiate the power on uh, you will see right on the bottom that uh, it's going to show this in the recent tasks and um, yeah this pretty much i think it's a basic basic overview of what you can do you even have a um, key shortcuts that you can use to access them but <laughs> i haven't used them i'm more of a mouse click administrator let's say so uh, yeah let's switch to the next uh, vSphere client so the next ver vSphere client is the um, HTML version 5 and this is basically designed and created by VMware themselves they don't rely on any third-party tools to be installed for it to work and you can see that right now for this version it's only partial uh, with partial functionality so um, I think it's, it's going to be a, a good idea to go through this uh, page as well and try to um, use use this uh, vSphere client and get familiar with. Let me log in once again. And uh, depending on if you want to log into the vSphere client, which was the older version or the new one, you have, uh, you can see right on the bottom side of the screen, the one is with a um, forward slash vSphere dash client and the other one is with a forward slash UI. So, yeah, this is the... Um, new vSphere client, the HTML5 version. And uh, let's say that uh, it's still a bit slow. It's possible that it's because of my environment, but uh, uh, let's say it's a bit snappier than the old one. And like I said, you don't rely on any third party software to be installed. So it's a built-in straight away. You can open it in any browser and it will work just the same. So right on the bottom, uh, before it disappears, you can see that there is the recent tasks and there is the uh, virtual machine that we've powered on. On the left side, we have basically the same menu with hosts and clusters, the VMs and templates, the data stores and the networking. So again, it's a bit simpler. Um, you can see, you can basically again have an overview of uh, your vCenter server, of the resources, of any um, different monitoring that is included in the vCenter. And um, again, I need to recommend that you go in for yourself and um, browse through the different uh, versions and uh, get familiar with them. Again, the right click functionality is available here as well. And if I go ahead and let's say I want this host to be out of maintenance mode, it will, you can see right now that it's going to put the host in, in normal state. So it's pretty functional, it's working. It's not, it, it does not have the full functionality of the vCenter server, but, but for basic administration, I think it's going to help you as well. Um, 
if I click on the different tabs, you already saw them uh, from the from the older UI, but yeah, this is the storage view that we can use and there are different actions from here that you can use. You can create a new cluster for the data center, new folder, distributed switch. Um, for the actual data store, if I click on actions, I have the option to browse the files. So if I click on files, let's see, it will try to open the uh, data store itself to see what is the uh, folder structure, what uh, the data store actually contains. On the top left, I have a menu that I can go to home or the different components that we've discussed. So yeah, it, it looks fine. It hopefully um, in the future, it will completely uh, remove the need for you to download any additional things. But uh, yeah, try to browse it, try to see um, if you like it more, you can share in the comments section below if you like it more than the old version. If you think that it has potential or uh, if you think that it's going downhill. So uh, yeah, this is a, a basic overview of what you can do with the different types of uh, vSphere clients and how you can navigate through them. Um, if you have any questions, you can always put them in the comment section below. I know that this is a bit short, but uh, let me stop talking anymore and let's move to the next lab this was nick from nlb solutions don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like the videos and share them see you in the next lab